Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And a very good day to everyone So, welcome back to our class So, today we're going to continue with uh, our chapter 9 Probability of combined event with uh, subtopic 9.3 Mutually exclusive event and non-mutually exclusive event Okay, so our first learning standard for today is differentiate between mutually exclusive and non-mutually exclusive event okay let's look over here how do you differentiate between mutually exclusive and non-mutually exclusive event okay some table tennis balls labeled from one to nine are put in an empty basket okay a pupil chooses a table tennis ball from the basket at random Okay, let T is the event of getting an even number, U is getting the event of perfect square, V is the event of getting a factor of 9, okay? Okay, so the relationship between the three events, T, U, V, can be illustrated using a Venn diagram. So this is the Venn diagram, okay, based on this scenario. Okay, so let's look over here. Based on the Venn diagram on the right, it is observed that event T and event V, okay, T and event V cannot happen at the same time. Thus, event T and event V are said to be mutually exclusive event. Okay, event T and event U, this one, T and U, are non-mutually exclusive event and the table tennis ball labeled with 4 is the common outcome for both event T and event U. Okay, so di sini, awak boleh nampak event T dan event V, dia tak ada persilangan, betul? Okay, bila tak ada persilangan, kita boleh panggil dia sebagai mutually exclusive. Uh, macam awak belajar English kan sebelum ni uh, What is your mutual interest? Apa benda yang awak suka, sama yang awak suka? Uh, so dalam maths pun sama Mutually exclusive maksud dia uh, Dia uh, tak akan sama uh, Itu maksud exclusive tu okay? Mutually maksud sama, exclusive Kita boleh katakan terpisah uh, Macam tu lah uh, So dia tak boleh sama dan dia mesti terpisah Okay. Itu cara senang nak ingat mutually exclusive event yeah. Mutually exclusive event something yang uh, terpisah macam ni Kalau dilukis dalam Venn diagram Ataupun apa yang berlaku pada T tak akan efek pada V Apa yang berlaku pada V tak akan efek pada T Okay Okay So tengok di sini Okay in general, a combined event A and B is known as a mutually exclusive event if there is no intersection between event A and B. Ha, tengok tadi saya cakap kan, A and B tak boleh uh, bersilah. Ha, dia sentiasa terpisah. Okay, itu kita panggil mutually exclusive. Dan boleh ditulis, can be written as uh, A intersect B is equal to null set. So, dia tak adalah, tak ada persilangan antara A dan Okay, so let's look at example 6. Okay, a worker in a factory is chosen at random. Given A is equals to a worker with wages less than 2,500. B, a worker that needs to pay income tax. And C, a worker who goes to work by car. Okay, determine whether the following pairs of event are mutually exclusive or non-mutually exclusive event. Okay, sekarang A and B. Okay, A, a worker with wages less than 2,500 and a worker that needs to pay income tax. Okay, so di sini dia kata, okay, event A and event B cannot occur together. Okay, dia tak boleh berlaku bersama-sama serentak. Okay, therefore, event A and event B are mutually exclusive. Okay, maksud dia event A dan event B tak ada persilangan pun. Maksud dia, kalau uh, pekerja tu gaji di bawah RM2,500, maksud dia, dia tak akan membayar income tax. Sebab kalau nak bayar income tax, gaji mesti dalam RM3,500 and above rasanya. Okay. 
Okay, next. A and C. Okay, a worker with wages less than 2500 and a worker who goes to work by car. Uh, ada tak kemungkinan pekerja yang gaji bawah 2500 dan dia pergi kerja dengan kereta? Ada lah kan? Uh, so, kita boleh katakan event A and event C can occur together. Therefore, event A and event C are non-mutually exclusive. Uh, okay. C, event B and event C. Okay. B, income tax C, pergi kerja pakai kereta. Uh, Suasa tak ada kan? So, kita boleh katakan can occur together. Therefore, event B and event C are non-mutually exclusive. Okay, sebelum tu saya nak tunjuk uh, kalau dia dalam bentuk ni eh, kalau dalam bentuk Venn diagram. So, A kita boleh lukis A dan B. Uh, dia tak ada persilangan. Uh, maksud dia, uh, pekerja yang gaji bawah RM2,500 satu set ni je. Uh, yang ni, uh, yang bayar income tax. Dia tak akan ada persilangan antara A dan B. Okay, untuk B dan C pula okay, Kita boleh lukis dia macam ni lah ha, Ada persilangan Ini maksud dia non-mutually exclusive Ini mutually exclusive okay? So, cuba tengok sini B tadi um, Pekerja yang membayar income tax okay? Ini pekerja yang pergi kerja pakai kereta ha, So, kita ada di tengah-tengah ni ha, Mungkin kita akan ada pekerja yang Dua-dua uh, Membayar income tax dan pergi kerja pakai kereta okay. So kalau di sini Dia bayar income tax sahaja Di sini Dia pergi kerja pakai kereta Dan di sini Dia berlaku serentak lah Dia pergi kerja pakai kereta Dan dia pun bayar income tax Boleh eh? So ingat kalau dia terpisah macam ni Mutually exclusive kalau dia bersilang macam ni kita panggil non mutually exclusive. Okey. So nanti awak boleh cubalah uh, self practice 9.3 mudah sahaja. Okey, next learning standard. Verify the formula of probability of combined event for mutually exclusive and non mutually exclusive event. Okay. So, di sini saya nak fokus betul-betul eh. So, bila nak jawab ni nanti awak kena tahu situasi dia. So, awak boleh pilih nak guna formula yang mana. Okay. So, cuba tengok di sini. Okay. In general, the addition rule of probability is bila kita ada okay, P, A, O, B Okay. Saya harap awak ingat lagi eh Simbol-simbol ni kita belajar dalam set sebelum ni Okay Kalau ini N Kalau ini O N darab O tambah Okay P A O B Okay P A atau B Sama juga dengan P A tambah P B Okay Ataupun dia boleh ditulis sebagai P A plus P B minus P P, A, N, B ha, Sini ada dua rumus ha, Saya halatkan okay, This is the first one This is the first one okay, And this is the second one okay, Apa beza dua rumus itu? Ha, mari kita tengok di sini okay, Event A and event B non mutually exclusive event ha, Bila sesuatu itu non mutually exclusive event Kita kena Pakai rumus ini P A and B is equals to P A plus P B minus P A and B okay. Kenapa kita perlu tolak? Okay. Kita perlu tolak Sebab kita tak nak benda yang kita kira tu double okay, Contoh eh P A ni saya dah kira dah Lepas tu saya kira lagi P B Kan ada kawasan bertindih ni So nanti kalau saya kira mesti dia akan terlebih Uh, so tak nak So dia tak tepat So apa yang berlaku Saya kena tolak dengan yang bertindih ni Okay uh, Baru saya dapat jumlah PA atau PB Hasil tambah ni Okay Boleh eh? Tolak sebab dia ada persilangan Ingat kalau kita tambah Ini sahaja Dua ni Bila berlaku dan mutually eksklusif Nanti kita ada akan ada redundant di sini Akan uh, ada overlapping uh, So maksudnya jumlah yang kita dapat tu nanti tak accurate Mesti terlebih 
Okay So sekarang uh, Saya kira Untuk ni pula Event A and event B uh, Mutually exclusive event uh, Kalau macam ni Kan dia terpisah dua Kan uh, So kalau terpisah dua Saya boleh je tambah terus Sebab tak ada kawasan yang bersilang Okay boleh Okay kita teruskan ke Example 7 Okay So the Venn diagram on the right shows the relationship between the universal set A, B and C ok a number is chosen at random from the universal set semua ni lah universal set ok verify the addition rule of probability for each of the following combined event ok the first one obtaining an even number or a multiple of 5 ok so nak mencari probability kita ada rumus contoh uh, probability of event A is equal to number of event A divided by number of sample space. So dia semua sekali lah. Okay. So di sini dia dah pecahkan event A ni. Okay. Di mana event A kita adalah A O B. Okay. So, tengok sini obtaining an even number or a multiple of 5 so kita tahu even number is A multiple of 5 is B ok ok so macam mana kita nak buat ok so kalau kita guna kaedah ini uh, A O B ok ok so kita tengok ok A ada berapa A ok A kita ada 1, 2 3 4 kan ok so A ada 4 B ada 1 uh, so ini number of event A kita ada 5 uh, over uh, berapa semua ok so kira lah uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 so kita ada 5 per 9 ok untuk mendapatkan obtaining even number or multiple of 5 ok sebab even number ada 4 uh, 2, 4, 6, 8 lepas tu multiple of 5 ada 1 so 5 semua ok next uh, kalau kita buat PA plus PB ok PA kita ada 4 over 9 kan uh, plus PB ada 1 over 9 ok so kita totalkan dapat 5 per 9 9 5 over 9 so hence it is proven that PA or B is equal to PA plus B B uh, sebab cuba tengok sini A dan B ni bersilang tak? Uh, tak kan? Uh, so dia adalah mutually exclusive event. Okay. So next kita tengok B. Okay. Obtaining an even number or a prime number. Uh, so ni sama jugalah situasi macam atas tadi. Okay. So even number kita ada berapa even number? Okay, even number Kita ada 1, 2, 3, 4 Okay Lepas tu kita ada Apa lagi tadi? Prime of eh, Sorry, prime number So, prime number kita ada 2 uh, ah, Nampak tak? 2 sama 2, 3, 5 Okay ah, Ada 3 So, kita nampak ada yang bertindih di situ So, kalau ada pertindihan, so kita kena guna rumus non mutually exclusive yang ini tadi, ok? Ha, tapi kalau guna kaedah biasa, kalau kita kira, so kita ada berapa ni? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Ha, dua ni dua kali kan? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Ha, so, kita ada 7 over 9. Ok? Ataupun kalau kita guna kaedah ini Ok, PA event A Kita ada 1, 2, 3, 4 kan uh, So, kita ada 4 over 9 Plus Ok, ni pula uh, PC C tadi adalah 
uh, prime number prime number 1 2 3 uh, 3 so 3 over 9 eh 3 ke 7 satu lagi uh, terlupa 7 prime number kan uh, so kita ada 4 ok Contoh kalau kita buat A dan B saja, A dan C saja, 4 plus 4 ada 8. So ada 8 terlebih. Ini 7 je, kan? So kenapa berlaku macam ni? Sebab kita ada nombor 2 ni. Nombor 2 ni berlaku pada uh, berlaku serentak. Okay, so kita kena tolak lah. So tolak ada berapa persilangan? Satu saja nombor 2 kan? So minus 1 over. 9. So, kita akan dapat 7 over 9. Okay, boleh eh? Ha, ni cara kita nak buktikan lah uh, formula ni. Boleh eh?